chapter 95 to 100 in life of pi the end of the book so let's just get this done so uh pi said well the author says that the ministry uh the minister of transport came to talk to pi and find out what happened to the Simpson, and they taped the whole conversation now chapter 96 pi says that this is already on the tape Pi said they had a terrible trip because he asked him how their trip was because they came down from California to Mexico and they said they had a good trip and Pi said he had a terrible trip and then they offer him a cookie and he takes a cookie and he sticks it under the duvet. Then chapter 97 is a short uh, chapter. The chapter is the story so they just says the story it's two words but the story is the story we've just read. So the story of the tiger and the algae island and all those types of things. Then chapter 98, when he's done telling the story, they say that Pi must think that they're fools um, because no one can believe this story. And then one of the um, ministers of the transport says that he's busy stashing his cookies, or the assistant says he's busy stashing cookies and because um, they kept giving him cookies. Then chapter 99, they say that they don't believe Pi, and then they say to him, bananas don't float. So Pi says, yes, they do. Here, take some of my bananas and check that they float. And they were like, that's not necessary. And he's like, no, go check that they float. So they fill up the sink, they put Pi's bananas in, they float. Then Pi asks for his bananas back, and he sticks them back under the duvet, because obviously now he's hoarding food, because you must understand, he hasn't had food for such a long time, he's going to hold on to what he's got. Then they tell him, okay, we're fine, maybe bananas float, but we don't believe uh, what you said about the algae island. And then he says, why? Um, because you haven't seen it. And they were like, yes, we believe what we see. So then um, one of the assistants says that his uncle is like a bonsai master. And then Pi says, what's a bonsai? And they said, little trees. So Pi says, shrubs. And he said, no, a tree that's little. And then he says, I don't believe you. I only believe what I see. So he's like basically saying to them, like doing to them what they did to him. Then they said they don't believe that there was a tiger on board. Um, it's unreasonable. And he said, well, reason is what got me through the whole thing. Um, and then they say, okay, but what also doesn't make sense is that the French man that you, the blind French man that you met at sea, um, doesn't make sense like what are the odds of meeting a french man in the middle of the sea and then pi says yes what are the odds and then they say the cook on the Simpson was french so then they said okay tell us the real story with no inter no invention just the straight facts so pi says one without animals and he basically says like a like dry yeast is factuality so you want the real story with no imagination and terrible so he says to them okay so only four of us survived it was the cook my mom, so Pai's mother, Pai and the Chinese sailor. The Chinese sailor and the cook were already in the boat and the Chinese sailor had broken his leg and his mother had come swimming to them on bananas. Okay, and then he said that the cook was like disgusting. He was eating flies from day one, uh, even though they had rations and everything. And then the cook eventually said to Pai and his mother, Look, we need to uh, amputate the Chinese sailor's leg. He won't survive if we don't amputate it. So they amputate it and then the French... So then Pi is going to throw it overboard because now it's quite disgusting. And then the French cook says, what are you doing? I was going to use that as bait. So the mother looks at the French cook and is saying, so you're telling us we helped you hold this man down so that you could use his leg as bait, not to help him live. So anyways, um, then... She says, you don't even need it as bait. We have enough food. And then she picks up the container that they put the rations in and it's empty. So then she says, oh, we're the only reason we're going to go hungry is because now you've eaten everything. So uh, the cook says, not just me, pie as well. And then pie feels terrible. And he's like, mom, I had a little bit. I was so tired and hungry and I had one. And then the cook looks at him and says one. So pie obviously had a few, um, but... I'm sure, like, the way I feel is that the cook had the most and Pai had some as well. Okay, then eventually um, the cook butchers, the sailor passes away and the cook butchers the sailor, puts him out to dry and they, he said, we'll use it as bait. And then um, 
the sailor the cook eats the sailor and Pai's mother says I knew it I knew you were disgusting I knew you were going to do that and the cook had like no remorse he was like mm, just tastes like pork eventually the cook and the mother fight so the mother fights uh, slaps the cook and this is like as a way of saying I can't believe what you've done to the sailor and everything like that and then there was another time where eventually Pai and his mother ate the fish that the Frenchman ca uh, caught using the, the Chinese sailor's bait. And then Pai was so weak once that when he was busy catching a turtle, he lost the turtle. And the cook slapped Pai, so Pai slapped the cook. And then the cook killed Pai's mom. And before he did that, uh, Pai's mom told him to go to the raft, which the cook built for fishing. So Pai does say that there were times when the cook really helped them, but the cook killed Pai's mom, and when he was on the life or the raft, um, the cook threw Pai's mom's head at him. So he beheaded Pai's mom, and he said that was like the worst slap he had ever, like, had ever. Eventually, Pai said he just got back onto the lifeboat, and the, he didn't say anything. He kept his peace, but the cook um, gave a quarter turtle and gave Pai the blood to drink. So Pai did it, and then he gave Pai the best pieces of the turtle. And then Pai killed the cook, and he said that he could see that the, the Frenchman wanted to die. He had, like obviously felt bad for what he did and then Pai said why must we cling to our evil ways because he never said I'm sorry and I think Pai just wanted the cook to say like you know what I'm sorry for what I did it was wrong and you know you got to understand that this might also be why he has a problem with not concluding things because it's probably left such a like wound like he never knows if the cook was truly sorry about it or not then Pai says he ate the cook and what he really didn't like about the cook was not that he was evil, but that he met evil in Pi. So Pi became evil because of the cook. And then um, the, the Japanese people, the people who came to inquire about the Tsimsim, uh, the one said, have you noticed that the sailor uh, broke his leg and so did the zebra? And then the, other, the assistant says, that's a good observation. And he's like, so Pi's mom must be the orangutan. The cook must be the hyena, and that makes Pi Richard Parker. So Pi is Richard Parker, and then they say, okay, and anything about the ship and why it sank? And then Pi said, I don't know, the crew wasn't really that friendly. We just saw crew members drunk every now and then, so probably problematic crew. And then they kind of realize that there's not much they can do, because um, the story isn't going to change. You know, Pi said all he knows, and... The answer is lying at the bottom of the Pacific Ocean. But before they go, Pi says, which story do you think is better? And then they said, it has to be the animal story. And he says, and so it goes with God. And I think what Pi is trying to say here is that um, because we sin, I'm using uh, the Christian religion because I don't know the others, so I'm not going to assume things. But he says, like, God forgives you for all your sins. So you can do horrible, horrible things. But when you accept God into your life, then um, you'll be forgiven for your sins and then it becomes like a beautiful story the better story and so Pisces and so goes with God okay and then chapter 100 this is from the author he said that when he eventually asked um, or spoke to the people who went and spoke to Pi he the guy said their interrogation with Pi was difficult and memorable and then there's an article that follows, and all that's in the article is like news on the Tsimsam. And basically, all that the dude says is that they don't really know what's happened. There are like things that could lead that maybe the engine exploded, or you know, maybe other things happened. There was a storm and all that type of stuff. And then eventually at the end he says, But there's a very interesting story about the only survivor who lived at sea for 227 days and he was living there with a Bengal tiger and it is the most fascinating story uh, ever. And that's the end of Life of Pi. So I hope that that helped you and that gives you a little bit of an idea on the story. You must remember that the story is based around Pi's physical and mental and um, spiritual suffering 
and all the little things about orange being the color of survival and everything like that and i really hope that this helped you so thank you for watching